so Cardinal star, former pride of the Texans, DeAndre Hopkins, and other NFL players fired back at leave over COVID-19 policy targeting unvaccinated players. So yesterday, uh, Hopkins went out of there and said, you know, I've never thought about this before, essentially, but I may have to retire from the league if this, you know, keeps up. So anyways, Hopkins deleted the tweet a short time later, but sent other tweets that uh, read freedom, question mark. So NFL players are firing back after the league issued a memo up Thursday uh, informing all 32 clubs that COVID outbreaks among unvaccinated players could result in the for, uh, forfeiture of games and loss of play. Arizona Cardinals veteran whiteout tweeted shortly after news broke that the new policy makes him question my future in the NFL. Never thought I would say this, but being in a position to hurt my team because I don't want to partake in the vaccine is making me question my future in the NFL. DeAndre deleted the tweet, questioning his future in the NFL after the league announced uh, any team with a COVID outbreak due to unvaccinated players could result in a forfeit. So then he deleted that. He tweeted this. The new policy is being interpreted as essentially mandating the vaccine without actually doing so. NFL Commissioner uh, Robert Goodell said in the memo that the league does not intend to add another week to accommodate games that need to be rescheduled because of COVID outbreaks. It further stated that outbreaks among unvaccinated players could result in forfeiture and loss of pl- uh, loss of pay for both teams if the games are canceled. So now they're saying, okay, last year, you know, we had to reschedule a couple of things, a couple of games had to get moved around because we had outbreaks. But, you know, this is before we had the vaccine. So now we have the vaccine. And if your players are choosing not to get the vaccine, then you know what? You will lose the game if your team is the one that is, you know, overwhelmingly the cause for us not being able to play. You will also lose money because we're not playing this game, so we're not going to pay you. So in business sense, you can see how that makes sense, right? The NFL is trying to run a smooth ship. Hey, please get vaccinated. We want to continue to play. We don't want to have to try to reschedule because we're not doing that like we did last year. But the only thing with that is being unvaccinated or being vaccinated, my point, being vaccinated does not exempt you from catching COVID and creating an outbreak. Because the because they're not because the thing isn't, oh, you have COVID, but you're vaccinated, so you're just good to live your life. You can do whatever. You can't transfer, you can't do anything. No. So this NFL policy would make sense to me if being vaccinated meant you could not get COVID. But that's not what this means. I literally was just watching Adam 22 two weeks ago. No Jumper podcast, if you know, you know, hip hop podcast. He's like, damn, I just I got my two doses. How did I and I catch I caught COVID? So my point is this rule doesn't really make sense to punish unvaccinated players when anybody vaccinated or unvaccinated can get COVID and spread it to other people. Now, being vaccinated could help, you know, with symptoms. That's cool and that's great. But if the thing is, oh, this player has COVID, we have to kind of shut down the game. All quarterbacks that were in this room can't play. So what's the penalty for that? So there's been a wide sweeping range of, like, you know, vaccination campaigns going on. And to me at this point, as, a, as, as an adult, not children, not kids, as adults, if you haven't got the vaccine yet, that's completely up to you. Because at this point, it's freely available. You can literally walk. Like, I can literally go into Walmart right now, walk up to the pharmacy, say, hey, give me the vaccine. They'll be like, okay, we got Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson Johnson, whatever. Pick it. Shop me up. I'll come back in two, three weeks, however process works, and get it again. So there's a lot of, you know, NFL players who made statements. Let's see what Jalen Ramsey had to say. He said, I know two people right now who got the vaccine but are COVID positive. I'm just saying I wouldn't look at teammates as bad if you don't get the vax. No pressure from five. Some of y'all clearly didn't get what I'm saying here, LOL. The NFL is pressuring, influencing guys to get the vaccine. They are saying if there's an outbreak, the team will be penalized heavily. My point is no teammate of mine will feel pressure from me. Because whether you're vaccinated or not, there's still a chance of getting COVID. I thought my point was simple, but I guess not. Because when it comes to vaccine, if you're just not super pro-vaccine, people try to kill you. It's like it's like you, you want to kill everybody. You don't care about humanity. No. Because getting the vaccine doesn't mean you can't get and spread COVID. It might mean you might not die. Your symptoms might be light, which is a great thing, which is good. But as far as the NFL rule of passing it, causing outbreaks, it's not like vaccinated people are immune. They'll never get it. Only people unvaxxed will get it. Anybody can still get it. So that rule, to me, doesn't make too much sense because, okay, let's say we control, let's say Cam Newton, right? Cam Newton is vaccinated. I don't know if he is or not, but let's say Cam Newton is vaccinated. Cam Newton catches COVID. 
He spreads throughout the quarterback room. Everybody in the quarterback room is vaccinated. We don't have a quarterback this week. We need to. Is that a fine? Is that a penalty? Because everybody in this room is vaccinated. So that's what I'm saying. It's not really a foolproof proof plan with this memo that was sent out by the NFL. There's also more evidence too. Look at this. Let me see if this pulls up. NFL. Let me see. I'm going to go to the top. Where we at? This is about a head coach. Not a head coach. It's about a coach. Here it goes. Viking Rick Dennison reportedly out as assistant coach after refusing COVID-19 vaccine. Rick Dennison is no longer Minnesota Viking assistant coach after refusing to be vaccinated for COVID-19, ESPN's Courtney Corrin reported on Friday. Dennison has been the team's offensive line coach and run game coordinator for the past two seasons. You know, they got Dalvin Cook, so they've been running. Like, it ain't like he's some scrub coach. They've been doing their thing as far as running the ball. He's the first NFL position coach reported to have parted ways with the team over the NFL's vaccination requirements. The first training camp practice is scheduled for Wednesday. So this is a protocol that the NFL has put down on coaches. Essentially, not even essentially. It is mandatory for Tier 1 staff to get the vaccine if you want to work in the NFL. So Tier 1 staff, which includes coaches, front office execs, equipment managers, and scouts, are required to receive a vaccine. There's an exception made for those who provide a valid religious or medical reason for doing so per a memo released by the league earlier this offseason. Those who aren't vaccinated lose Tier 1 status and by virtue are not allowed on the field, in meeting rooms, or having any direction or direct interaction with players. Players are not required to be vaccinated, but face stricter safety protocols throughout the season that they remain unvaccinated. The league also sent a memo to teams on Thursday outlining harsh consequences for teams. We just read about all that in regards to DeAng- uh, DeAndre Hopkins. So, like on one side, I get where the NFL is trying to come from. I get it. The NFL is trying to move along, make money, secure TV deals, and keep the ball rolling. They don't want to have to reschedule games for week 19 and do this. They don't want to do that. So, on one hand, I get it. But also, like I said earlier, getting the vaccine does not guarantee that you will not get COVID and spread it to other people. So, to me, that does not, that does not make any difference if you got it or not. So also we got Jamel Hill. Uh, she's resonantly uh, to chime in on things of this nature. So she said these tweets. She said, if you aren't vaccinated, you can't expect to have the same privileges as people who have been vaccinated. Live with your personal choice and the consequence that comes with it. This does not apply to people with medical reason for being unvaccinated. It's like, I get it. If you don't want to, like, this, about, it, this would make sense to me if you were going to have places start to regulate and segregate based on vaccination, right? If the, if the plan is we're going to bubble off everybody who's vaccinated because y'all can't, uh, cause y'all can't catch COVID, even though y'all can to one business, to one, whatever, and we're going to throw all the unvaccinated people over here, then that might work. Right. But that's not the world that the NFL is living and playing in. I can't separate all my unvaccinated. Like I can't have my unvaccinated players work out over here. And then we'll be able to figure out if y'all got, if y'all got code over here, then we're going to throw all my vaccinated people over here. And then we're going to see if it, if it spreads through this. Oh no, no, it's the vaccinated people. So we're good. Um, my quarterback, my running back and my wide receiver can't play, but that that's fine. We'll just keep rocking like that. But anyway, she also responded to a tweet from another Twitter user. Love you queen. But this is a, uh, this is contradictory. If it's a personal choice, let it be that without projecting. And by projecting, I'm referring to the consequences. Just let people be. And then Jamel had responded, because your decision not to be vaccinated impacts other pe- everyone else, that's why it's not a personal choice. So if a business and other services decide they don't want to deal with unvaccinated people, so be it. But like I said, that would make more sense if the vaccine was like a cure. The vaccine was like a for sure blocker that you could not get COVID or at least if you could get it, the vaccine somehow traps it within you and you cannot spread it. But if you can spread it while being vaccinated, then what, what's, what's the conversation we're having? Yes. You personally are protected because you got whatever the hell they put in you and the symptoms are less, or you don't see any symptoms at all. And let's be quite frank. Most people I uh, looked at a little thing today, a little chart, a little pie chart that had numbers and statistics of the depth of it. It's older people, people above 50. Not saying young people can't die from it. You can be overweight. You can have asthma. You can have any lung. Like, not saying young people can't die because on the chart, young people have died from it. But overwhelmingly, it is always people above 
the age of 50 that are affected mostly by COVID and now this new Delta variant. I'm Allegedly, I'm just, this is the, the chart and the graph that I saw. I forgot what article I seen it on, but this is what I'm just saying. Anyways, she also went on to tweet, where is it at when it comes to, so a vaccine that's proven to be widely effective and protects people against a potentially deadly virus will get an NFL player to retire, but not the threat of imminent brain trauma that they expose them to every game. Got it. So, I get what she's trying to say. She got 9,000 things. She got 2,000 comments. So she got the, the pat on the back. Like People love this tweet. But like I said, at the end of the day, it is your choice. If DeAndre Hopkins knows that going out and playing could cause brain trauma for him, but he wants to make the money, then yeah. But if there's a vaccine, yes, proven to effectively tamper down symptoms of COVID-19, not block it completely. Like I said, if this if the vaccine blocked COVID completely, this would be a completely different conversation. If it just wiped it away, like you would never get this again. Or while you have this booster that lasts you a year or whatever, you will not get it. But if you can still get it and still transmit it to other people, then this conversation is really, to me, irrelevant. Now, like I said, you're protecting yourself personally because you personally, if you come in contact unvaccinated or around a vaccinated or an unvaccinated person, you will have like a safeguard. As far as an unvaccinated person, you just got to fight it. Either you're going to be asymptomatic like a lot of people were throughout 2020 or you'll get the really bad the, the pneumonia. You can get that. You can go on the ventilator. Like you have that. And as an adult, that's the decision that you wanted to make. So there's a difference because they're not – it's not like they're forcing players to go and play with, you know, there's no like consequences in place from what she's saying. So, like, to me, that's two irrelevant things. And also, like, yeah, it's protecting people, the COVID, but we don't know what the fuck it's going to do to people. And you see all these things, mesothelia, you don't really know what this will do to you long term. I'm not saying it's going to do anything because I don't want YouTube to kill me, but this drug isn't even verified by the FDA. There's another, like, Johnson Johnson, if I decide to go get it, Johnson Johnson, that's out. I'm not getting that. I see too many reports on that one that I'm not even touching that one with a, a stick. I'm not even going near that one. But if the players don't want to get it done, they don't have to get it done. The rule of penalizing people for not getting it doesn't make sense to me because let's say everybody's vaccinated. Everybody gets vaccinated in the NFL. Are you requiring their family members to be vaccinated as well? Because what if, say, I watch Aaron Donald vlogs, right? He has children. His children go to school, I assume. He, I don't think you can even, for a certain, I think his kids are like little kids, so I don't think like under 12 you can even get it. So say his kid goes, catches it from whoever, comes home, Aaron Donald's vaccinated, but he gets it and then goes to practice and then they spread it. So what's the penalty? Is there no penalty for that? Will we, will we reschedule the game if everyone's vaccinated? Or is it just like a push? It's like, you say, oh, we're going to bring Olivia Rodrigo up here to the White House to, you know, tell the youth, hey, it's, it's great, get it do it it just feels like a lot of pressure but my point is if you're an adult you haven't got it yet you might not want to you're not evil you're not bad you might just be cautious some people obviously like they like to like people are trying to the new media push is like to, to paint everybody who's unvaccinated like some crazy wild conspiracy theorists but maybe we just kind of we're a little skeptical we just don't know corona was a new thing is swept through the entire globe and then vaccines popped up. I can see why people would be hesitant to take it. And I also can see why people would rush to take it because they fit. No, we're getting back to normal life. If I do get it, it'll be less um, deadly to me by studies. I'm assuming that are out. There. It's less likely to affect me like it would an unvaccinated. Like I get, I get both sides. But you can't like you can't villainize both sides. Like some people who are unvaccinated, they shit on people. Who, you're stupid. You're a puppet. You're a, you're a test lab dummy. And then on the other side, you're dumb. You're a conspiracy. Hey, let everybody do what they want to do. I don't think jobs should force people to do things that they don't want to do, especially with a drug that's not FDA approved. Let me. I, I keep saying that, but I would like to just verify while I'm here. I don't want to, you know. Okay, 
So, yeah, okay, Biden says full FDA approval of a COVID-19 that could come as early as the end of fall. So it isn't FDA approved yet, but he's saying it could by the end of fall. But also, the FDA has approved a lot of things that weren't too good. But I don't want a conspiracy theory. If you want to get it, go get it. Great. You see a lot of people, they don't, you know, they have lesser symptoms. They have a higher survivability rate. If you don't want to get it, pray that you don't get it. And pray if you do get it, it's not as harmful and deadly as we've seen at the beginning of the storm of the COVID. But that's all I really got, man. That's all I got. That's my PSA. If you want to get it, go get it. If you don't go want to go get it, don't. Just go out in public, you know, do what you got to do. Don't get too close to people. You know, wear a mask. If you feel that you're in a space, an area that you need to wear a mask, just let people do what they want to do. It don't got to be a criticism. It don't have to be a condemnation on people at all. But anyways, make sure you subscribe to the channel, man, so you know every single time that I post, Turn on the post notifications as well. And uh, give this video a big thumbs up. Comment down below what you guys think about this whole NFL debacle. And other. And I seen it today, too. I was watching the Pat McAfee show, and there was like a pro football talk tweet. And it was like nine, nine high-profile players of some team who are too good to cut don't want to get the vaccine. I don't remember what team it was for, but it was like nine high-profile players that are deemed way too good to cut do not want to get the vaccine. So it's not like an overwhelming majority of players, I would assume, that are rushing to go and get the vaccine. But I'm sure there are people in the NFL as far as players that do got it as well. But anyways, let me know what you guys think. See you guys next time. Check out the other videos, man. It's your boy, D-Friend. Peace.